so made it to the cemetery out in the middle of nowhere kind of cool though uh, look at that so not bad for a little office today yeah not bad at all tons of birds around here though there's when I was pulling in there's some huge like vultures over there and then on the main sign of course I accidentally spooked them before I even knew what they were pretty nifty so I apologize for the wind right away but this is what I came to deliver up here this is called a vault this is what your casket goes in before you go into the ground it is a completely enclosed system oh uh, there isn't anyone in it if you're wondering this is just an empty shell but this keeps the um the ground from collapsing well even though the dirt's already on it keeps the uh casket from collapsing from the weight of the dirt now not all uh burials are like that this is a little bit newer so let's say here i'll show you kind of for an example this this one doesn't have it going on but when you come up to the headstone sometimes you'll see an impression right in front of the headstone and that's from the ground clap uh, the weight of the ground pushing on the casket and the casket actually collapsing so that's what the vault is designed to do to keep it from uh, the ground seeping down like that and the casket getting smushed by the weight of the dirt all right so i found one to show you that actually had it happening it's usually with the much older uh, stones now i am going to try block out the name let's see this stone was 1935 now the stone is much newer so it's been replaced but if you look see how it kind of drops down right there and then kind of comes up next to the other one that's what I was talking about with the the casket collapsing now you can kind of see it but that's what those vaults are designed to do now obviously with how old that um, that person is and how long they've been buried it obviously takes a very long time you usually don't see it it depends on the quality of casket too so if you get a high-end casket obviously then if you get a higher end casket it's going to take it a lot longer to collapse like that but if you have a cheaper made gas casket you know they're just like ones that are not made out of metal or anything like that or like a a softer wood I guess it falls apart faster then the casket itself will just fall apart just in the ground just from the water and vegetation and everything just eating at it over the years now doesn't mean it happens to all caskets it also depends on your environment where you're at what type of stuff you're doing now obviously that person was from the 1930s so if you look at the environment that he's at we're i think just above 8,000 feet so if you think you have the elevation which makes it much drier out here is very dry uh contrary to what a lot of people think for some reason around here in Colorado the it's just there's no um humidity so you have that factor taken out so it kind of, that's why another reason why it takes so long also with how with where we're at the climate does not get very hot at all i mean i think to this trip i'm doing right now is probably one of the hottest days i've seen and it's maybe 80 at most oh. so if but you have very cold winters which helps slows down the decay process of the wood and everything else but you also have the weight 
you have the weight of the snow that stays here much longer too. But down that low, you kind of get into that frost area. So, you know, it's just a number of things that can cause it. It can happen faster, it can happen slower. It just depends. But that's, I just want to show you what they do now in case you were kind of paranoid about the worms getting in there and stuff. They, they don't anymore. I mean, if it does, they have to crawl through a lot of stuff to get to it. And that thing, like, compresses down to where nothing can get to it. Unless they can chew through plastic. But that vault keeps it from collapsing. So, whatever you get buried in, it'll be fine. You won't have any dirt on the casket itself. You'll be in this nice kind of tomb, really. And you don't have to worry about bugs. Well, maybe some bugs, but not really and yeah you know a lot better than it used to be where you just kind of you didn't even have a casket and you just kind of laid in there but that was my work delivery for today so now I'll maybe talk a little bit more later on but right now i'm just going to show you scenery of where i'm at and you know my little today's commute that i get to do for work that i absolutely love so Catch you guys later. Right. Bye. Look here. Wait for my camera again. You have the old school original cabin right there. And then you have this homestead, which is an original cabin. But if you can tell through the camera, I don't know if you can, they added an addition onto the original cabin. Just one of the things I always think is cool about coming out here is that a lot of people actually end up reusing the, uh, what do you call it, some of the original homestead cabins, like this one over here. Well, no one's using it, but, you know, you find these just kind of randomly through this valley, and pe some people just fix them up, and uh, they actually live in them, and they'll... Um, just do additions onto it so kind of one of the cool things about when you're in Colorado some people will just you don't need nothing new they'll just use the original stuff that someone else built a hundred years ago Coming to San Isabel.